Now, as I said, the local elections now are approaching imminently. They're on the 4th of May, so what, less than three weeks ago away. And uh, so far, the Conservative Party's campaign has been relatively low-key. The media weren't even invited to the party's launch event in Wolverhampton last month, which was a bit odd. Uh, the Tory party chairman, Greg Hands, who's the MP for Chelsea and Fulham, is the man in charge of campaigning for the party. And as I said, we did speak a little earlier, before I came on air, and I started off by asking him about the government's plan to scrap the building of smart motorways. Well, it's been right to have a look at the evidence. You're right, there's been a lot of public concern. And that is why we've taken the decision uh, to stop new smart motorways. That's but the it's right thing the for us to do. But the government their feet on it. I mean, there's been considerable concerns raised by the likes of us on The Telegraph, lots of investigations. Anybody with any motoring experience thinks it's ludicrous to remove a hard shoulder from a motorway. So, so why has it taken this long? Well, I think it's been right for us to, to, as I said, look at the evidence, to come about it um, with, bearing in mind, all the factors that are involved, and that's why we've taken the decision as a result of the public concern to cease new smart motorways. That's what I think is the right decision. But shouldn't then also the smart motorways that have also already been built be changed because obviously they're not safe now. If Rishi Sunak's taken this decision, he must be saying that the ones that are already in existence should be scrapped. No, I, I think we're going to have obviously keep watching the situation um, and uh, looking at that. Uh, but there are no plans to scrap the existing ones. This is a this is actually a decision to stop there being new smart motorways at the moment. But if new ones aren't safe, why are old ones safe? Well, that is uh, obviously the situation that we will keep watching. We will <clears throat> be constantly vigilant here on behalf of the public. We totally understand the public concern about that. That is why that we've stopped uh, new smart motorways. But I'm, uh, I'm saying that we will keep watching the situation but, with the existing ones. But if I was a driver, which I am, I'd be worried now because Rishi Sunak doesn't think it's safe to proceed with new smart motorways. So I'm therefore going to be worried about driving on smart motorways that already exist. Well, that would be a fair assumption to assume that they're unsafe. Uh, no, I think there's a difference between uh, new proposals and motorways that are already there in place and operating. But as I've said, we but will keep... 50 people have died, haven't they? We will keep motorway. watching the situation. We totally understand the concern and the rightly... It's quite right, the government puts public safety first above anything else. Uh, that is why we stopped doing a new smart motorway as a result of that concern, as a result of public safety fears. OK, let's move on to the local elections. Why have the Conservatives been quite shy about their local election launch. No media were invited. It's all been a little bit hush-hush. Are you worried about these local elections? They're not looking too good We've for the been Tories. anything but shy, Camilla. I've well, actually been up and down the country. I don't, I don't the think country. the media were invited to the Wolverhampton launch on March the 24th. Uh, OK, but yesterday, uh, Rishi Sunak Rishi has been up and down the country uh, over the weekend. He's been uh, in Lancashire in particular. I've been up and down the country. I've been across the country as Conservative Party chairman campaigning from Ramsgate to Hartlepool, from Accrington down to Worcester, yes. in Hertfordshire, in Surrey, uh, in Teesside, in Lancashire, yes. High Peak in Derbyshire, How's in support of our brilliant councillors and council candidates. How's it going? Well, it's going to be a difficult set of elections, obviously. It's the biggest set of elections um, uh, in, in the four-year cycle of local elections. These seats were last fought in 2019. Um, when it was a different political situation. Jeremy Corbyn was the leader of the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. Labour did particularly badly that year. Uh, so Labour need to show a lot of progress um, if they're going to seriously say to the general election next year that they've made progress and are ready for government, which I don't believe that they are. But so there's talk of the Tories losing 1,000 seats. There are 8,000 up for grab across 230 council areas. A thousand seats would be disastrous, wouldn't it? Well, that's what the independent academic experts are saying. But I know that our councillors and our council candidates are fighting amazingly hard. As I said, I've been into a lot of these councils. I've been in, in, in Cheadle, which is part of Stockport. I've yeah. been in High Peak. Uh, I've been in Hindburn. I've been in Hartlepool. Uh, I've been in Darlington. I've been in Elmbridge. I've been in Thanet. Sure. I've been in Hartsmere. I've been okay. up and down the country. All right, and so you've, you've candidates travelled, are fighting you, yeah, really hard. You've clocked up your um, road mile, so to speak. Um, not sure what motorways you've travelled on, but we've already covered that topic. Um, you did a piece with Tony Diver, my Telegraph colleague, and people on the doorstep keep on mentioning Boris Johnson. So is he an electoral asset for the Conservatives? Or? Well, uh, look, <clears throat> I'd love to have uh, be working. Uh, Boris 
Price is very much part of the Conservative Party. Has, um, has but he equally, been on the campaign or is he going to go on the campaign? Are you going to weaponise Boris come uh, the general election, do you think? Well, Mr. I think we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but Boris is always welcome to be out campaigning uh, for us as a party. But what I discovered... Uh, in the last few weeks, campaigning in the local elections is a real enthusiasm for what Rishi Sunak is doing. Right. And a respect for the way that he has conducted himself as Prime Minister, getting on with the job, delivering the five priorities of halving inflation, restoring growth, uh, uh, reducing debt, uh, cutting yeah. hospital waiting lists and stopping the boat. But Those how's are the that going? Five priorities. Hang on, let's, I, I get that, and I think it's all about instant deliverables, isn't it? Having said that, you know, stopping the boats, we haven't had one migrant deported to Rwanda yet. I imagine the boats and the migration issue is coming up time after time on the doorstep. Surely the voters are saying, well, the Conservatives have had 13 years. You haven't stopped the boats. When are you going to stop the boats? Could you give us a deadline on that? I, I'm not going to give you a deadline, Camilla, well, but we're don't working the public need it incredibly hard on the boats legislation, the laws that will enable us to take tougher action are going through Parliament at the moment. We've done deals, very pragmatic deals with friends and allies like France, uh, Albania, Rwanda themselves, to make sure that we get cooperation mm. going both but ways. But people will say you've had more than a decade to sort this well, out. Well, the boats is... Uh, OK, I mean, there used to be a decade ago. The issue was coming through the Channel Tunnel. We solved that. We sorted that out. Uh, boats is a more recent phenomenon, and that's why we're sorting it out right now. The mm. legislation going through Parliament, the Rwanda scheme is still being I mean, challenged in been the courts. Out. We're hoping if to win those challenges. But if you've gone from sort of several hundred in 2019 to 45,000 last year, I mean, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I speak to MPs all the time. They're angry because their constituents keep on saying, why are all of our hotels full of migrants? Yeah, well, that, that's why. But you'd be wrong to say, Camilla, there's something that has been going on for 13 years of Conservative government. It is, as you rightly point out, a more recent phenomenon. And that is why we're putting in place the measures like the laws, uh, like the agreements with France, Albania, mm. Rwanda. We're working really hard on it. We're getting the laws through at the moment, through Parliament, to Labour, the SNP, the Lib Dems are all fighting those laws. We're fighting so the courts to get the Rwanda scheme to Rwanda, in place. Do you think? Sorry? When will someone be deported to Rwanda, do you think? Well, it's still going through the courts at the moment. We're fighting off those legal but, but, challenges. I mean, you must, this must be quite frustrating for you. You know, I'd imagine that Tory voters like GB viewers and listeners are quite incensed by this issue. They feel that you haven't had a grip on it for a long time. So you know that if you don't stop these boats, you're probably going to lose the next general election, right? Well, no, I don't agree with that. But we really? are, because we are getting on with putting in place all of the measures that we need. And when it comes to any general election, of course, it's worth remembering that Labour, the Lib Dems and the SNP have fought against us at every available opportunity to stop these new laws. I know, but the Conservatives to promised to take action. back control and people think there's a lack of control over our borders and there's a visible lack of control because people keep on arriving by dinghy. I completely understand that concern. Yeah. Uh, but that is why we're taking the action that we're doing through the, through the boats legislation going through Parliament at the moment, mm -hmm. getting the Rwanda scheme being challenged in the courts. You know, we're trying to win those challenges. We're making progress. We're making progress yeah, here, Camilla. But is a lack of grip a problem here? Look at the strikes now as well. You've got the RCN having refused that pay deal. You've got junior doctors still asking for 35 per cent. I think there's the perception that, you know, the country isn't working with lots of people standing on picket lines. Why can't the government get a grip of this issue? Well, I, I, I refute that. Uh, the government is very much uh, getting to grips with this situation. Rishi Sunak really? and the whole cabinet are working flat but out. still on strike these people we now hear that the teachers are saying that they'd like to go out on strike with the nurses and the doctors so I mean are we going to have many frontline public sector workers actually in their roles or are they all going to be continuing to hold protest well, banners uh, but it's worth remembering for example if you look at each of those situations so you look at the NHS for example it, actually the RCN leadership has recommended implicitly acceptance of the offer it's the RCN members uh, other unions are balloting at the moment. Unison, which represents a third of the relevant mm. staff in the Agenda for Change workforce, um, for, for whom these pay offers will be out there, 
uh, has accepted. So actually, a lot of unions are accepting the offers. And a very generous offer, Kim. Actually, it's 4% yeah. last year, 5% this year, with one off lump sum. But they're digging their heels in, and there seems to be this impasse. I mean, people That's want progress. Offer. People want progress, don't they? They want this issue to end. They want but strikes to end, and they want the boats to be stopped. I think the people want progress, but they also want us to be a responsible government, be responsible with taxpayers' money. That's why we can't meet the junior doctor's demand for a 35% pay rate. That would give some junior doctors a £20,000 pay rise. So I find the public, yes, they are concerned about some of the strikes, but equally they want the government to be responsible to all public sector workers and responsible to taxpayers as well.